Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com backslash A-H-T-T. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hard to Tell Podcast, episode 106, second episode of 2020. Dexter Henry, Brian Fonseca. Uh huh. And we had to bring our friend here because we got some serious stuff to talk about. <laughs> stuff that's kind of frustrating. And I felt like nobody else was better to talk about this than our man Jamal Murphy, writer for The Undefeated, also co host of The Bros Pod. Bill Roden on Sports Podcast. He talked a little bit about the topic we're going to talk about on his podcast this week. First of all, Jamal, what's up? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. It's nice and warm in NYC. <laughs> no, I'm, so I'm, warm. I'm the serious guest. That's, that's me. Nah, that's you. Can't, can't joke around. No, 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 no. Oh, no. No, we, we oh, did no, we last time. Joke. Oh, no. We could definitely <laughs> joke around. Although, I'm just, you know, of the seven times you've been here, and I think it's <laughs> literally seven at this point, uh, I think half of them have been kind of serious ish. Yeah. Maybe. I, now I feel bad. I feel like we've labeled you the serious I know, guest. I'm serious. I don't know if that's. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I don't it know if that's worse. problematic. It could be worse. Not. It could be worse. You could be the annoying guest. Yeah, it could be like the the clown. Yeah, nobody wants to be that. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nobody nobody wants to be that. But the, the issue we are talking about uh, has been going on in sports has been it, it kind of starts around the the Rooney rule Rooney rule excuse me mm-hmm. uh, in the NFL and it basically the question of is it working or not? Um, just a little brief history for those who do not know the Rooney rule uh, was a rule that was created. I guess creators kind of forced upon because Johnny Cochran, rest in peace, was going to uh, sort of make us think about the fact that there weren't a lot of black head coaches in the NFL back in the uh, a couple decades ago, about 15 years ago, and basically forced the owners, majority of the owners who are white, to at least interview one minority candidate per coaching search. Um, they started they started doing that, but we haven't seen much change. Uh, we look at this year. NFL season just ended. Black Monday passed. A uh, bunch of coaches, a couple coaches got fired. As of this point, not one black coach, head coach, has been hired. There's been one person of color, minority coach, been hired. Has been given a second chance. That's Ron Rivera. He decided to join the team in Washington. Uh, people know I do not say that team's name. Shout out my guy Ron Rivera. Good hire though. Good hire. Good yeah. hire. Yeah, Shout yeah. Out my guy, Ron, Rivera. Ron Rivera deserves and he's another got, chance. He's got Doug Williams in that building too. That they're going to be mm-hmm. working together. So right. That that, that which kind is of matters. beautiful. Yeah. However, there have been plenty, as we can see, qualified black candidates out there or black coaches who have coached before who have not gotten a second chance. Mm. I'm looking at this. There's been a lot of discussion about it. It feels like it's increasing, guys. I think it's a problem. I don't know how much is coming to a head right now, but I think it's shameful. I think it's shameful on the NFL. I think the, I think the uh, owners, GMs that are doing some of these, excuse me, they're doing some of these hires should be ashamed of themselves. What do you guys feel about where we are with with the Rooney Rule? Do you look at it the way I do, where it's not working at all? What do you guys think? What, what do you guys think about it? Let me, because uh, there's some tweets I want to get to regarding this, but there's one mm-hmm. in particular because this is uh, adding to your point, one of your points. This is tweeted from this dude named Craxton Robbins, who is a Division II running backs coach, which yeah. we're going to get to that part of this later on. But he's a running backs coach, and he tweeted out, this was interesting, he said, 32 NFL teams, three black coaches. Roughly 128 Division One programs, 11 black coaches. And again, we're talking about football, which is played by mm, 70% black right. athletes, about probably. That. Right? About that. Uh, not going to mention the laughable numbers at the D2 and D3 level. Eric Bieniemy, offensive coordinator for the Chiefs, can't get a head coaching job. But a position coach for the Pats gets hired by a cornerstone franchise. Are we in 2020? We, we are. are. Yeah, we are. <laughs> like we, we are. We are, and we'll get, we'll get to that the, the Giants hire and that and that in a second. But Jamal, uh, you here and you've wrote a lot and talked a lot about issues of race and sports. D- do you feel is the Rooney Rule working? Is it time we move past that? I do. I think it's a problem when you actually have to sort of tell people that they need to look at people of color to even just interview, and it's not a thought to say, hey. 
let's try to keep our workspace as diverse as possible. Do you think this is a problem here in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge problem. I think, I think what you said, the word you use, shameful, I think, I think that's on point. Uh, you know, I talk to people in, in the league and people whose job it is specifically to, to address these type of issues, and they've used the same word, shameful, people who've dealt with the league for, you know, 40-plus years and who owe their, you know, way of you know, living to the NFL will still call the NFL coaching, you know, minority situation shameful because it is. Uh, the Rooney rule, your question was whether the, the Rooney rule is still working. I I mean, it's never worked. Yeah, I was right? going to say, I was going to correct myself. I'm not sure it's ever but, worked. But it's necessary. It is necessary. Right. Uh, you, you know, you say, I mean, you, you sound you sounded like you had a little trepidation with it because because it's something that's forced upon the owners. There's no, if it's not forced, they're not going to do it. And even when they are forced, they're not going to do it. <laughs> I guess, I, to the latter point of what you just said, I think that's why I had the trepidation, right? Right. It's like, we're, we should never reasonably expect Mm-hmm. <laughs> the way things have gone for black people in this country, people of color in this country, to be able to say, like, hey, let's open the doors so all of you guys can have a seat at the table, right? right. That's never happened. And so if it wasn't for Johnny Cochran right. um, literally forcing that, I think the reason I brought it up is because I wanted people to know the history behind it, that this was not a situation where the majority of the white owners were like, hey, let's make this things better to have opportunities for more no. black people and people of color in terms of coaching in the NFL. That's not how it went down. It actually took for lack of a better term, guys, they had to be shamed into this, right? right. We're saying the situation is shameful, but they had to be shamed into it. Right, yep. and even that did work. And, and Okay, so the Rooney Rule forced supposedly forced teams to at least hire one minority candidate prior to making any hire, any any co- head coaching hire. Right? To interview, right. Not to hire, interview, right. right. But prior to hiring anybody, they had to at least interview one, one uh, minority coach. And that's not working um, because they – it becomes basically, you know, people complain it's a token, a token interview. Yep. And then uh, a lot of black candidates have been have been upset about it, and 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 don't even part, don't even want to participate in the, in the process because they feel like it's not a real interview, yeah. right? Um, so yeah, of course it's not it does it's not working. It doesn't seem to be working, but I don't think you I don't think that means you take that away because. It, it, you know that you're just going backwards. I think, you know, a lot of people, and I, I said this on the pi- on my podcast on Bill Rodin on Sports. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, the the word quota is bothersome to you know to white people, to black people. Even we don't enjoy being quota hires and that kind of thing. Well, but, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get. But to that. Um, I think it's it's come to the point. That's I mean I you know it, how about how about there there needs to be at least. Six black head coaches or six minority head coaches. That would be a, a tech, you know, quote unquote, that would be a quota. But, I mean, it, it's it's justified. It would be, it's deserved. I mean, a lot of times, you know, these quota hires, I mean, there might not be any black people or minority people in positions of power. Right. Unless, if it weren't for uh, the powers that be forcing that. You know, we have, you know, affirmative action and, you know, in education. And I've always argued that the people who benefit, uh, Based on affirmative action, are people who should have been hired in the first place? If if we were just being, you know, it's only the best of the best minorities who get hired, even based on affirmative affirmative action. Yeah. So it's the same situation here. I think when you have you have thirty two teams and you have three black coaches, four minority altogether. Okay, and people always talk about you know the pool. Who who are the people that? That uh, you know, they have to choose from. Where are the minorities that they have to choose from? They're all over the place. There are a lot of assistant coaches, uh, minor, you know, minority assistant coaches. But more importantly, the pool itself to me really is people who played college football and professional football. That's that's a pool. People who played it because because the majority of coaches, even even white coaches, majority of white coaches at least played college football. Right. right? So you have so college football is about fifty five percent minority. Right, fifty-five to sixty percent minority played college football. Seventy percent in in the NFL. So that's your pool, yeah. right? So you're telling me that I think so now out of I think nine percent. So you have a pool of what sixty to seventy percent of which of which of where your coaches usually come from, and you're only hiring nine percent, nine to twelve percent minority coaches. Something's wrong there. Yeah, like you, there's an yeah. there's an intentional mm. something intentional is being done. 
So, well, see, this is, this is what I love what you just did there. The, the numbers matter, right? Like, we always like to look at these numbers and stuff in sports. It absolutely matters. And when you put these hardcore stats in front of people, but what I've seen, and we're going to touch into this later, it seems like a lot of the black media or minority media, has we're the ones having this conversation. You look across a lot on, the on these mainstream places. You look yeah. on ESPN a lot of these places. I haven't seen a lot of our uh, white brothers and sisters – who are in the media? They're not talking about it. But why? Right? But why should? Uh, I mean, let's be honest. Like, why should they? Because they're protecting their own power, right? And 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 that also shows. And I know Brian, you wanted to get on this. This extends beyond football. And I think that's a lot of big point of what we'd like to talk about today. This is not just a football thing. No. This is a thing for a it's, lot of people with opportunities in America. It's a total. It's an American issue, because what we're saying about black head coaches and minority head coaches and their opportunities of getting into the NFL, it's the same thing that applies to basically every company across right. America. What do we know? We know media, right? So in our landscape, and we literally just talked about this a few episodes ago, uh, Dexter and I did, about the average just percentage of people who make up a newsroom across newspapers and other media outlets across America. And if you do the averages, roughly 75 to 80% of these newsrooms across the board are filled with white people, right? And the 25% black, minority, Native American, Asian, whatever, all of that is bundled up into the other sort of quarter of that, right? Mm -hmm. And if we're the only people fighting for it, fighting for equality or something close to it or talking about it, then that's just what it's going to be. That's just what it's always even, sort even of though, been. Even the number you're, you're pointing to, it seems high to me. I mean, you know, the 25, uh, you know, most, if you go to individual institutions, yeah. if they have 25%, they definitely never have 25% African American I, or, or Hispanic. I, but, but here's but the, when you, when you, when you encompass everything. But even then, 25% is high. I A lot still, of times it's like 10. But here, I've here, still never seen 5%. that. I've but here's the problem. But here's the problem that I have with that 25%. So if, if I go to an average staff, let's say the average staff is 25 people. Let's just stay on the number of 25. We're looking at, hmm. Maybe five of those people by that number are, um, you know, Hispanic, black, whatever the case may be, just of color. Mm -hmm. And then how many of those people are editors? Right. How many of those well, people are in positions of power, quote right. unquote? How right. many of those people have authority to recruit, hire, and make those decisions? Maybe one. Maybe. Maybe. When you dwindle it down mm -hmm. to like that, and that's the same thing that's sort of going on in the NFL, right? Where you have these coaches, they're not really in positions of power because – the black coaches are often running backs coaches, defensive back coaches, like we were talking about um, off mic. And this, how many of them are really head coaches that they can hire? Oh, I'm going to bring this offensive coordinator. I'm going to bring this defensive coordinator. Like, there's very few. So as many coaches as there are, there aren't that many that are above maybe running backs coaches. Because we were looking at Eric Bieniemy's history, for example, right? He's been a running backs coach at UCLA. He was a running backs coach at Kansas City for five, six seasons before he was promoted the offensive coordinator. Who's now the current offensive coordinator That's for the Kansas City That's crazy that you're a running backs coach for that long? Usually mm -hmm. you're – I mean, in th you know, theoretically, if you're a quarterbacks coach, for example, which is usually white dudes, you're also – you become the wide receivers coach also or you're the offensive coordinator within two to three years. Right. But, see, therein lies the problem to what you were talking about, Jamal, right? You're saying that this thing is – when you look at the numbers and where the pool is coming from, from college and everything else and that, and then you take what Brian said where you have guys like Eric Bieniemy who are working in the system but don't seem to get that opportunity even just to move up from running backs to it's, offensive coordinator. And this is somebody who played for eight, nine years right. as a backup running back right. and has been an assistant coach for roughly 20 years now, who's part mostly of, as a running back. Who's part of that pool that you're talking about, right? right? Here's a problem. Found this article, and I want to give the person credit, on the undefeated um, place you, you do some work for. It was uh, Martenzi Johnson. He did this great article about this new study about minority coaches still fear worse during the NFL hiring process. And one of the things that he brought up that I thought was really good was he was talking about the what we have normally seen in terms of hiring. you the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, right? Most times, and then they'll usually, they'll usually get you hired as a coach. Numbers tend to skew more towards offensive coordinators getting hired over defensive coordinators, right? right? Especially, mm -hmm. especially recently. Yes, especially recently. Mm -hmm. Sean McVay, you right. look at other, other guys like this that has happened. Most of the offensive coordinators, goes to Brian's point, usually former quarterback coach, wide receivers coaches, generally are white. Right. That also ties into some of the stereotypes of right. black quarterbacks and that right. these are those people that could teach them. Right. 
So if you look at just the raw numbers of that, those people are getting the opportunities consistently, and that is problematic. And if we don't have people like this brother at the Undefeated, you other people pointing this out, there's no way to even shame these folks into doing this into doing this change. Well, Do you, we had we had Anthony Anthony Lynn, coach of uh, San Diego or L.A. Chargers, um, on the podcast a while back. No, they're still San Diego. He's one of he's one of he's one of the three <laughs> he's one of the three African American coaches uh, in the league now. Uh, he had a rough year this past year, but he was eleven and eleven and five uh, last year, nine and seven the year. Oh, before I bet he's on the hot year. seat now. Right. Right? I was seeing I was seeing hot seat articles <laughs> right this year because because exactly. Philip Rivers because Philip watched. Rivers is declining. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but what he was saying? Did you ask you know, him about that? We, we, well, I got well, to listen. No, that no. This was this was pre before this season before started. This season. Oh, okay. so this was coming off his eleven oh, and five. Okay. He was on so, high. Yeah, no, Philip Rivers. When he wasn't on the hot seat. Yeah, yeah. He was on the hot seat then. Right. But you know, he he was he was saying you know that you know what you said that. That they've set up this system, and they, the powers that be, owners, I guess, uh, set up this system where you know coaches are expected, or or at least they see what what the traditional uh, you know career path was for for white coaches was. If you're an offensive, you know, you, you become an offensive coordinator or a QB coach, or have something to do with the play calling, it's a faster road to the head coaching position. So, of, so a lot of black coaches were you know were trying hard. To become offensive coordinators, or and then, but what he saw was even when that happened, as we see with Eric Bieniemy, they didn't, they still didn't get the head coaching job. And mm-hmm. what he was saying is that's that you know he felt that 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 you know limiting the pool to offensive coordinator or QB coach was misguided because you know through his experience, it's about being a leader. The most important thing about being a head coach is being a leader of men, yeah. um, getting along with people, you know. Uh, Earning people's respect, yeah. knowing the game, he, he was like, you know, the pool should be all coaches, and there are plenty of plenty of African American minority coaches who are running backs coaches and wide receivers coaches and and li- defensive line coaches, and and the point is, you know, he made a specific point, like he said, you know, to him, a running backs coach knows more about the offense than a quarterbacks coach. He was like, yeah. the only thing the quarterbacks coach knows about is the passing game. They don't know about the blocking schemes or the running game. He was like, the running back coach, you have the running backs have to know about, you know, the running game, the passing game, blah, blah, mm. blah. So it doesn't even make – it's not even logical, yeah. you know, what these what the parameters are that are made by, by, you know, by the powers that be. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www audibletrial.com backslash A-H-T-T. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. This is something that Dan Levitar mentioned when I was listening to him the other day. He said Joe Judge and Cliff Kingsbury, and these are two of these, you know, just sort of average, I guess, coaches. That or shocking up, hires. We could shocking say, hires, yeah. Joe Judge and Cliff Kingsbury are not allowed to exist as black men, Dan Levitar said. No question. Uh, that simply doesn't happen to black men, and what's happening to Eric Bieniemy doesn't happen to the white guys. That's all I have right. to say about I it. I think that's that's spot on. To touch on Joe Judge, for people just to bring the audience says, no, Joe Judge, uh, special teams coach for the New England Patriots, hired by the New York Giants uh, as their new head coach. <laughs> Jamal and I were talking about this before that he apparently has won the press conference yeah, and, and the charm and of people. Now all of a sudden, that. people are saying like, "Oh, you know what? A special teams coordinator is actually a good hire because they manage people on both sides of the ball as opposed to offense and defense." Like now is when we want to make this spin, right. And right? he was a one-year special teams coach uh, under Bill Belichick. The, the previous year, he was in college, an assistant, yeah. special teams assistant, yeah. special teams coach but, for, for, for so Saban in Alabama. Years he ran a, yeah. ran a special teams program. Correct. And meanwhile, Eric Bieniemy has... How many years did you say? You just went through his whole thing. He, he Almost 20 years. years. Almost 20 years. And, 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 and has the MVP. Right. It, like, does he not get credit for that? And the MVP right. gives him credit. Mahomes is on record <laughs> saying he, he, he has got helped there. me exponentially exactly. you know, learn the offense. Andy Reid himself said, you know, he's ready uh, for, for a head coaching job. He knows the offense as well as me, as well as I do. And just to, m- to make your point about, you know, a, the, a white Eric Bieniemy does not exist right. right? in terms of not getting, not getting a right. ho- head no, coaching opportunity. Because we saw the white 
Eric Bieniemy. It was a guy named Nagy, who mm. now is the head coach of the Chicago Bears. Mm. He was the previous offensive coordinator under Andy Reid in Kansas City for a couple years. Yeah, and he. Based off the success of Kansas City's offense, got the Chicago job, and he's there now. The enemy two years since then, the offense has been even better. better. Yep. And he's, and yep. and Andy Reid's first offensive coordinator, I believe, was Doug Peterson, right. who became the head coach right. of the Philadelphia. Right. And the first thing you know when you when you bring up the enemy, people who want you know they're, they're half the it seems about half of the. Half of the population, <laughs> half the citizens of this country will, will come back at you and try to say, oh, well, no. Uh, it's, and, and black people, too. It's not just white people. Yeah, black people, too. Black exists. You know, we'll, know we'll say, oh, well, you know, that's Andy Reid calling the plays. Okay, oh, that's, oh, that's actually not <laughs> what I was But you gonna... didn't say that about Nagy. Nagy got credit. What plays did Joe Judge credit. call in special teams? Right. And we don't even know if that's he true. Called, we don't he, know What if did that's he true. call? He called a kick return. He called punts. Well, let's well, let, punt well, blocking. Well, let's 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 say this, on, right? Because I feel like Jamal, this was also the point you were making too, and I feel like we probably can we also the same talk about this. the reaction that Joe Judge got for his yeah, press conference? I'm, yes, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Jesus but special, I think it would be great if you looked at a when you're looking at candidates that you're looking at everybody, right? Like I agree with Lynn's point, right? That it's like, you should look at all coaches. It shouldn't just be this certain way. Right. I've also had this issue in like journalism too. And I remember my career being like, <laughs> Having this issue right you now. just did stuff online digitally. So I don't know if you could work for a TV station. Like that happened, <laughs> before. That happened before. Um, and so, like, it doesn't matter, I, but they'll figure matter. out like, which white you, person they could put there. Yeah, right. and, although, like, that's the thing. I've saw people, and you know, I have a friend who's here watching the podcast. We used to work at the same station. I saw people who did stuff where they came from, and I thought it was cool that they got it. But I'm not sure I would have got that same opportunity. Right? right? They got they came from just doing print, and then they got an opportunity to freelance to do stuff on TV. I saw that stuff at the, at the station I worked for, and it was like, ah. Uh. So you see things like that. Yes, we should be diverse in the way we're looking at hiring. Well, the, the point that you're getting at is like, well, why aren't those certain diverse opportunities available to certain people, right? Is there a is there a black Joe Judge out there? Do I think there's some merit to the special teams guy gets to see a lot of stuff that's going on right. in the team? And, and there's you, merit to and, that. Yeah, and if yeah. you view, you could, you know, I'm not, it's not about that. Yeah, the point I'm trying to make is that it's not about a special teams coach could never be qualified. Right. They could be, but just like a running backs coach could, could be qualified. Could be qualified. Right. And he also did it for one season, right? Right. And we right. Right. Or if you think he's such a great leader, how come we've never seen the same career path for a minority coach who's who you know who's who's such a great leader? And that's my point about the pool of people because people want to say, you know, they they try to make excuses for it by saying, "Oh, well, you know, there were there're not that many minority coaches on the offensive side, and that's who, you know, it's not our fault. We, we don't, there are not that many of you guys to choose from. No, 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 no. You're choosing from the college football pool of people who played because you look at, you look at even, like I said, even white head coaches, uh, about 90% of them at least played college football. So that's really the pool. The pool is like players who become coaches, coaches. or people involved in the team from right. an early age become yeah. coaches. And there are plenty, and that's why it's different from, it's a little. It's a little worse, unfortunately, uh, than just regular society, where you could say, "Oh, well, there's only twelve percent African Americans, so really, should there be more than twelve percent? Um, you know, ten percent or twelve percent in any given field? In this field, there's about seventy percent, yeah, or right. fifty to seventy percent pool. Yeah. You know, so it's not even. You can't even say that yeah. because we're dominating one aspect of the pool that you, and then all of a sudden you ignore that and act like that doesn't matter. And now, mm -hmm. some of the narrative about Joe Judge, because I was looking at this earlier. Um, you guys know Kimberly Jones. She's an NFL Network reporter. She was there at the press conference, and mm -hmm. she noted that before the presser, Joe Judge shakes the hands of every media person and says he will try to help us do our jobs. Uh, comes across exceedingly well. In the background, John Mara was smiling abroadly. Now Judge is <laughs> meeting former players. NYG leadership is confident they hired the right man. Ian Rappaport says you're starting to see why Joe Judge blew the Giants away in this interview. As Kimberly Jones goes on to say, Joe Judge says the New York Giants will reflect the the region, blue collar, hard work, old school. You know he would have been he would have been a great hire for as the head PR guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that would have been that makes sense. But that's all this says is. Right? Team will practice in pads and practice live tackling. Great. So what you're telling me on so you're going back of, to Tom Coughlin before he changed. So what's breaking, breaking, breaking the rules? Breaking the rules. And yeah. oh, so what you're telling me 
is that you're hiring a coach in 2020 who, after a year of special teams experience, shakes hands and wants to do right by the media and also wants to give his players the sort of fast track in getting CTE. That's basically what you're telling me. <laughs> that right. If they're going to practice in pads. In the CFL, they're going to practice in pads. You also anymore. have a limit to what you can do with that, with practicing pads in the time, right? Yeah. Like So just because there's regulations against heat and the rules and safety and all this stuff. So and all that, that sounds hold on, nice, one more, one more. but it's not that great. It's and, because PR. And one more. There's a popular, uh, I will not name this New York Giants fan account, but very popular. They have about mm, 50,000 followers on Twitter. Joe Judge, this is a quote from Joe Judge. What I learned from Be Coach Belichick under his one year there, right, Jamal? One year? <laughs> what I learned from Coach right. Belichick is real simple. Be flexible with your personnel. Don't try to shove square pegs in a round hole. Figure out what you have. And they respond with, I love this quote in all caps. Like, yo, y'all are suckers, man. Oh, they're suckers. Honestly. And the Giants are probably <laughs> suckers, too, because now we see how he got the job. He blew, He, you know, he... he he won the interview process, which is a part of the deal. He could, you know, but but we, you know, we get to see the results on the field now. We get, you know, once he starts coaching, then we can talk. We can really talk, okay? And he hasn't had, and unfortunately, he hasn't had that experience yet. Yo, nobody wins anything from winning the press conference, okay? <laughs> Uh, well, they win, you, I mean, you win some. I good mean, whack like yeah. First, too. What did you say? I said you win some good publicity early on. That's all it is, though. But, but right? here, here's but what, but what, what the problem what is. Do with that? But the problem is, as you were talking about before, just sort of the the disconnect between uh, why are, well, you were talking about this, Dexter. The disconnect mm -hmm. between why are we the only ones talking about this? Look at the only people talking about him winning the press conference. Yes, and ain't and, no people of color talking no, no, no. about that. But see, that's no, all. We're, but, we're, but, we're still pissed off. But, but and we ain't stupid. Right. But that's <laughs> Jamal's Jamal's point when I asked him that question or brought that up. Jamal, you were saying, well, like, of course they would because they're going to protect the certain the certain things that they have around the institutions they have, and that also extends into journalism and sports media because you know him shaking your hand and most of the people I know a lot of people that work on the Giants beat. Most of them don't look like any of us in this room. I'm not even sure there was Shocking. a person of color that is a reporter on that beat. I don't think there is. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure there is not. So a lot of them look like him. And that's also, I think, a lot of things that are going on with these hires. They look and sound like him. Right. The people want it. It's not the right thing to do, but they just go in there and they're like, hey, I want this person that looks like me, sounds like me. So they ignore and don't care about the diversity. And the reason they don't care about the diversity is there's nobody there to check them, so the only way to check them is talking about stuff like on this podcast where we got to shame them and saying how shameful this is because it's shameful. It's a joke. Like it's ser it's it's seriously at the point where it's a joke when the enemy is not getting interviewed enough when he's not at the top of everybody's list. When, as you said, Brian uh, and Jamal, you said he had produced the MVP. Okay, he's had a top offense in the league back to back years consistently done it this guy's clearly one of the best at what he does and he hasn't got fast track to a job we can't even say like how do we qualify that mr joe judge was the best special teams coach was anybody saying that before he got hired i honestly i, I honestly up, never heard like i'm not saying he doesn't right. deserve an opportunity i'm just saying does anybody was anybody right. saying this? and not to, and not to pile on judge i mean rule i mean he never coached can we league. talk about rule was, what did, baylor was Matt baylor rule. did baylor go undefeated this year or something in, in college are they are they in the are they, <laughs> they in the think he's gonna game, be they in the championship game monday he turned them around from one win to what 11 wins and he did that in in two years he did that so I'm not saying he hasn't I mean, done Baylor's a good job. been good before. It's not like they've never been. But good. Like, it wasn't like they were a down program yeah, for I mean, a decade. Okay, but let me let me put the, let me put this in another direction, right? Um, Todd Bowles, for example. Right. I feel confident enough in saying if Todd Bowles was a white dude, he'd probably get another opportunity soon. Do you think somebody like a Todd Bowles will get another opportunity at some point? Probably not. Uh, what, but what history tells me no. I don't need to. What, here's a, what, to, here, to what, history here, says no. This one, wait, and you you mentioned. Uh, the undefeated article, which referenced the, uh, the report, the report was Arizona State University Global Sports yes. Education and Research Lab. Ken Shropshire, who, who you who was on your podcast on multiple, multiple times, times. Yep. Uh, he's the CEO of that. So they, you know, they did a huge, they did a lot of research on on black coaches in the NFL. One of the most interesting uh, stats I saw. Check this out: No team in the NFL has hired consecutive head coaches of color ever. So <laughs> oh, once, shit. once. When they fire oh, oh a head coach of like, color, no team has ever gone back to back with it. Like it's always like, oh, we gave you a shot, we gave them a shot. Now yep. we, we gotta go, we gotta bring it back, we gotta bring it back to, we gotta get a white guy, we gotta, we gotta clean, it, we gotta <laughs> we clean, gotta it, we gotta clean this up, we gotta clean this up. Yep. 
And I don't know if it's for the fans. I or think for some. I think it's some. I mean, look at look at I the think Jets. Some markets it is. Look right. at the Jets. They went from Rex Ryan. They were like, all right, let's try Todd Bowles. They right. gave it four years. They're like, all right, let's go back to Adam Gase. Right. right. Now we're gonna go super white. But we're how, go right but how crazy is that? Like, never <laughs> has this never. there been have have has a team fired a black coach and then hired or fired a minority coach and then hired another minority. I have coach a question. Right I have a question. We might not have the answer to, but. Remember before when I mentioned that tweet uh, from the running backs coach whose name is escaping me, where he said there Craig were eleven. Robinson. Yeah, Craig, Craig Robbins. Craig Robbins. Robbins. Eleven Division One uh, head coaches or whatever. I wonder, are those all from like the MEAC and the no, SWAC? No, well, well, most. Well, in Power <laughs> Five. Power Five numbers are awful in terms of <laughs> of, of black head coaches in college football. The, the, uh, Basketball again, too. You saw Basketball what happened. Yeah. Willie Taggart was just out after what a year and a half. Yeah, and they paid him to go away. Yeah. Eighteen million dollars, and now I whatever think he, his bio. Where was. is he at now? FAU or FIU? I don't know. One of so. those two? I think so. He got another job, but either FIU or FAU. Like how, but not? now that's Tallahassee, Florida. Things are very different down there. <laughs> if you've ever been, I can definitely say that. But so I'm not surprised. That's the part the of Florida that Joe Rogan wants to get rid of. <laughs> I understand why. I sorry, Tallahassee. I can. We'll see how why. long it takes them to hire another another uh, minority, co- coach. minority coach. Howard Bryant, who's been tweeting on this issue. Pretty extensively over right. the past week. Yes, you brought up Matt Rule, Jamal, right. and there were people who were coming at him saying, "Well, this is kind of Matt Rule or Joe Judge. They could be really good coaches, could, right? Like this could is be. The, they could be." Mm-hmm. He said the position that Matt Rule or Joe Judge may turn out to be good NFL coaches completely misses the entire point of who is given the opportunity: one, to succeed or fail, and two, to build wealth as head coach salaries usually dwarf coaching pay. Matt Rule got. What do you get? Five years, $60 million yeah, guaranteed? Broke, broke a record. I think. Broke a record? What? This is a guy who's never had any NFL experience, right? He's just turned around Baylor, and he just got the ultimate financial security. He even mentioned Jason Garrett, right. who has not been that successful of an NFL head coach, but he got 10 years in Dallas and got to accrue that kind of wealth. Right. These are the opportunities that also aren't given to minority head coaches. So Matt Rule is essentially the new Chip Kelly. Right. Could be. Could right, be. Right, right. Cause that, cause that's what or, it was. Or Spurrier. Remember, We've remember seen Chip, it Chip Kelly was supposed to be this revolutionary because of all the things he did in Oregon and right. stuff like that. Never had any NFL experience before. Got paid. That. He ex- experienced that included what Johns Hopkins, New Hampshire. Then was an offensive coordinator at Oregon, and then was the head coach for only four years. And then Philadelphia was like, you know what, man, you got the look. You got the schemes I mean, and all this yeah. stuff. Then after three years, he was fired. Then San Francisco gave him a run for a yep. year. So he had a second head coaching job right away, and now he's at UCLA. And or, UCLA sucks. Or how about you could be out the game for a long time like John Gruden, and you can get 10 years and $100 million. <laughs> <laughs> and I think a lot of it is, is along, along racial lines, you know, I think white people, when they see a young white guy have success – they lay, They put this genius label on them, uh, and that's a label that. Oh wait, no hold black, on. Okay. No black it happens person, in media too. No black person. They would. <laughs> they could not fathom putting that label on a black person. It happens in media too. Thing. I'm trying to think about a, a young black coach in any sport that got that label of genius. Okay. You know, that's that's our friend Gerard Hector. I think part of his annoyance all the time with, with Brad Stevens and how people were so quick to <laughs> annoy him. That's my guy, uh, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> So quick to annoy him, right? You you, you brought up that's a great point, right? Brad is legitimately we good. Don't ever but, see that? No, but, I'm not saying he's not but, a good coach. He is a good coach. Hold on, uh, Lloyd Pierce. If he was white, would he have gotten the genius label? <laughs> maybe, maybe. You know what maybe. I'm saying? Like maybe they they, they talk about the genius and development. Once of Trey upon Young. a time, David Fisdale. I know it sounds funny now, but he was an assistant coach in Miami, where they were a really good team. Would he have gotten the genius label? If he was a white dude. Probably, right? Like th- these are the things that people would think sound asinine, but it's true. I, also, does the does the NBA have this problem, or is it strictly an no, NFL? A, NBA or is I like to say nah, an American? Thing. The NBA is a American problem. Thing. The problem the problem with that goes into as well too. Jamal is that again, there isn't enough talking about it in the mainstream, right? There isn't a lot of it, and a lot of the problem with the NBA too is a lot of the people that cover it. Um, I don't think care care or don't want to have the awareness to even speak on these issues, but I kind of go back to agreeing with you is you can't even expect them to, right? right? They, they don't. There's there's no motivation to now. As allies, it'd be helpful if they did. Right. I, no doubt, there it would are be some, there are some allies. There are there are there are white people who see this for what it is and they and, and that do speak out on it. It's just few, few and far between. Clean. Yep. And I, you know, honestly, I mean, if you're in, if I, if I were white 
Well, I don't know what side. Of, you know, I don't know how I would be. I think, I think, I think I'd be one of those good, you know, honest white people that, that tell you that, that that expresses what I really see, and yeah, it's yeah. pretty obvious that racism is going on. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident I would be that kind yeah. of white person. Yeah. But the but the average person, can we expect that? No, the average you, person you is selfish. You the average person to, to, to speak against their interests? I don't no, know. the average person is selfish, yeah. wants to stick to sports, and they don't care. For what it's worth, of the 30 head coaches in the NBA, eight of them are of color. That includes uh, James Borrego, who is Latino. Right. That includes Eric Spolstra. In a, in a league that's even more predominantly black. black. Yeah. So you're talking about, so that's you're talking about eight, black eight out of 30. League. Right. So you're talking about, I don't know what the percentage is there, and I'm not going to do math. Yeah, four, no, I'm saying, but look, four out of 15. About 80, about, if 80% of the league is black. Four out of 15 is like, 17, 18 percent. 80 percent of the league, whatever, is black. Uh, college, I think it's about, you know, I lied, thing, it's 27 percent. Um, you know, you would expect head coaches to be some to be, you know, I'm not asking for, if, if I was, uh, I'm not asking for 80 percent co- head coaches to be minority. <laughs> You'll right. take it, but I'll but, take, you know, I'll take like 40 yeah. percent, you know what I'm saying? Right. 40, 50, NBA you know? is 27 but right you, now, but so. you, that's why I said about yeah, 20. Yeah. I did the, my math was still good, mine was awful. The, yeah, you said 17. <laughs> I was like, what do you, I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Backpack Broadcasting continues to bring you the best original sports content, but now you can get more of the content you love. For as little as $3 a month, you can get access to bonus content, including behind-the-scenes footage and interviews from the Sports Walk, Sideline Stories, or the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. All this exclusive content comes via Patreon. There are tiered levels of patronage, and each Backpack Broadcasting patron receives exclusive perks. Your support helps Backpack Broadcasting create more of the original content that you love. Visit Backpack Broadcasting's Patreon page and become a patron today. What about the pushback that you hear sometimes, Jamal, from people that's like, well, they're just out there hiring the best candidates. Yo, that's what they should yo. do. They're, they're just that, trying to hire. It shouldn't be about race. It should be about hiring the best people. See, yeah, when, when you, you do, do this, yeah. when you do, and people listening, they're not going to see what I'm doing. But when you do this thing with your thumb, that's <laughs> that's that's some white shit. Like you already know. <laughs> what is this? The thing that that's the political hiring thing. the best. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. okay, I got yeah, it. When you're yeah, at the yeah. debate yes, stage, that's kind. That's kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's a very. I would say very old. Old yeah. person. I mean, when people say when people come back with them hiring, just to, you know, we're just hiring the best candidates. What can I say? I mean, to me, you're telling on yourself because word. I mean, that's <laughs> that's word. ridiculous. I mean, to, you're saying you're hiring the best people for the job, but then all these guys are getting fired two years later. So these are these are obviously not the best people for the job. And if you're honest at all, and you say you're hiring the best people for this for any job or this job, you would have people of color, more people of color. You'd have more women. Yep. Uh, you would have more. Every it wouldn't just be white males. So you know. I, yeah, is the, the but that's you're not, what you you're not you're hiring. You might be hiring the best white males for the job, and you might not even be doing that because they're all getting fired. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's the thing too. Like they and they continue to get the same opportunities also. But as we talked about on the podcast a while ago, we were saying like, yo, uh, when it comes down to who's getting hired and people wanting to hire the best people, they're not actually hiring the best people because, as Jamal said, it would be a more diverse group because some of us are better than a lot of y'all doing right. these things. Right, but they're just looking from the same groups of people, and this is what we see in sports, that sometimes the same groups of people. Another point is that uh, the white guys that get hired are getting the repeat hires. They're getting the opportunities again and again. Right. And, Brian, you brought up saying that, hey, is this also a problem in the NBA? This is not just the NFL problem. MLB has this, too. Oh, God. Full time black man. This is this was a how Brian put out these these stats. Full time black managers in Major League Baseball history. Fifteen. Damn. Number. That's of, it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, baseball, baseball's got a number. Who were former All Stars? Nine. Mm. Who were former MVPs? Three. Mm. Amount of those who received a second job? Seven. But there's an asterisk by that because Cito Gaston was hired twice by Toronto. Mm. Right. Received the third job. Two. Right, it's like you look at Dusty Baker. Dusty Baker's name always comes up, but people always talk about, oh, he didn't win the big game, he didn't do this, even though his record is really good. Right. He's turned around a whole bunch of teams. Right. He's been a good manager, but that's all you'll, you know, you'll hear about. But they'll look over 
the the misgivings of some other coaches right, right now. And they'll hire guys who never who never made the playoffs. Right, never. Yeah. Right, w- Willie Randolph. Yo. Loved what he did with my Mets. Yeah. Has he got a second chance? No. Why? No. Why is that? But at least the Mets fired Mickey Calloway uh, after two years and hired Carlos Beltran. Like I, I'm here for that. I, I mean, <laughs> another, as you should be. I'm another, excited another, for that. another great player. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, right. Well, that that's the messed up thing which, about it. Which which is but, the which is the real point of Howard that, Bryant's point. Right? That's at least the reverse where we're like, hey, they got the white dude out of there and they hired the Puerto Rican. But, yeah, but yeah. but I'm but, saying. but if Beltran fails. Will they will be will, will there be enough, guaranteed right, that they will there not there will not be another person of color. Well, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. There will not be for the, for the next right, ten years right after. after. <laughs> and and, your, and Jamal, your point about it having to be a great player was the point that I thought Howard Bryant was trying to make. You have to be you have to hit all these boxes just to get an opportunity, yo, but, even to be an MLB. Yo, but it, you have to be a great player, no, but forget, just to do that. Forget that. That's the same thing in what we do. We have to check all these boxes. Right. And you have to do be do this. You have to have been here, but it's hard to get here because they have a lot of white dudes here and they don't really have enough spots for us, quote unquote, here. So you have to do a lot of these things to get to this place and stuff it's like that. It's the stuff our parents You're out told here us. getting all these all this experience on your resume, we know from experience, but then you see the person that actually gets hired to do the same thing and you're like <laughs> Let, they, what? Let's go. Let me go back. I want to go back to this, uh, like to the Rooney Rule and what. what yeah, yeah. Was, uh, and to what I was saying before about about quotas. Okay, I'm at this point. I'm all for it. You know, I'm all for them saying there has to be a certain number. I'm not saying this will ha- ever happen because they'll because one of the ways they protect against that is to shame us, to shame us into thinking that's a bad thing, right? Nope. Because we're like, oh well, I'll, I'll just be a token then. Okay. Oh well, but I have an opportunity, hmm. you know. So, and then, uh, and then a lot of those people, because again, they would, if, even if there were a quota, and they said you have to have this, you have to have at least have this number of minority head coaches, hmm. right? A lot of those guys are going to succeed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of those guys. Oh wow! It turned out he was a, he was a good he coach. He was actually a good yeah. coach. Wow. Yeah. No <laughs> shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially <laughs> because they're only. Well, I mean, to even get there is hard. So think about it. They're probably right. only hiring the top of the top, right? right? And they're not giving because, enough chances because to other otherwise, guys. Otherwise, they are not going to do it. Yeah. Okay. It's not going to happen right. unless you force them. I mean, the one of the which is we know has happened because of right. the Rooney Rule it didn't happen unless that. And one happened. of the most eye-opening things for the article I wrote for the Undefeated about uh, Flores, uh, yes. Brian Flores from yeah. from the Dolphins. You know, I talked to Rod Graves, and he he's a form he was a former Jets GM. He was a former GM at, at, with the Arizona Cardinals, black black man. Mm-hmm. Um, now he heads the Fritz Pollard Alliance, which is a, basically an organization trying to deal with the minority issue in the NFL, trying to get more coaches of, of color in there and all that. One of the things he said to me is, it's just like, um, you know, it really k- stuck to me. Is like, just like anything else, diversity. In order to fix diversity, in order to address diversity, you have. You have to make an you have to make an intentional act. There has to be an mm. intentional act to deal with it. It's not going to just change on its own. It's not going to just change. Um, people aren't just going to you know come to some kind of epiphany and start hiring. These guys aren't going to just start hiring minorities. Right. It's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Ha- there has to be a you, ha- you have to realize it's a problem, and and then specifically address it. So that means you're specifically hiring minorities, or at least opening yourself up to it. And and we've already the Rooney rules supposedly open tried to open the door to that, but they've you know it hasn't worked. So the, what's the next step? You have to be even more authoritative. The act has to be even more intentional. So I so that to me that's the next step. You you have if they're not going to do it, so you have to force them to do it. How do we? The question people are going to ask then is how do we force them to do it? Is it Keep continuing to continue to shame them? Like, is it continuing for us to have these conversations, pushing it out there? You know, uh, white people got to step up, yo. shaming out white media members who don't it. talk about. Because I'm no doing that already. We've been doing we've that. Been do, we've yeah. been doing the Rooney Rule is supposed to shame you. Like, yeah. wow. Like, can you at least interview one of them? Well, here, here's the thing, too. And just but to, clearly, they're not ashamed. And, no. But just to, and just to put a bow on this, because we're gonna move on to other happier stuff. Let's say hopefully. I'm happy, but I'm happy in but, life. But I'm just not happy with them. That's all. But I'm but happy. Dominique Foxworth, if you listen to him on Bomani Jones' last podcast, they had a, he had a very good, I think, just sort of random solution. I heard this, and yeah. I did. Yeah, go ahead. Let's tell Jamal. So I, I basically, what you would do with the rooting rule is you would have the ownership group, basically whomever it is, they have to because you know the quota is to you have to interview at least one pe- one person of color. 
So what you would do is you would write down why you're bringing in, not just them, but every single interview you have for the time you're hiring a coach, that period, you're, ha you're interviewing everyone and you're writing down why. And then after you make your hiring decision, you have to write down why you're hiring this person and then why you're not hiring the other people. You have to basically put it all in writing. And this all would be Because public. then this way you can't be like, oh, he just looked the part. Because then you're going to look stupid. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just makes a lot of sense. And I think that that might, even though it might just be BS statements, right. no, we like can that. at least see that. Right. So then we can see through that and expose that part of it. And then maybe when we're all, you Well, know, at least we can see the thinking. And at least if you are, they think, right. so let's say, let's say, you're saying that you're biased here because we do. We have agreed and talked that there are biases here in the way this process goes about. Right. Let's say that you're like, it's not conscious, which I don't buy. I think it is conscious, so I don't buy all that. And right? It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter, right? <laughs> right? When you're writing this out, let's say you try to write some BS and be like, oh man, like like you said, like if he looked apart, he really won me over. You got to look at those words and be like, yo, what does that mean? Right. Like, this isn't going to fly. If I put this in front of somebody, more people should ask that at the press conference. Hey, you said this guy won you over. How did he win you over? What did he do that was so specific? Did he shake everybody's hand before he came in the room? And are we now impressed by that? Shame on all those reporters who were impressed by that there. Mm -hmm. That's and also, not impressive. Also, don't be shaking hands. Just bump fists so then people don't trade, like, cancer and stuff like that. <laughs> That's not, you can't trade <laughs> cancer. Are you serious? No, that's why I'm laughing after I said that. <laughs> I don't know. You be believing some stuff. I don't know. Who knows? Wait, like you? what? Who knows? Like you? what? I don't know. That wrestling is real. I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> Relax. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. See, we got it. We got it. No, 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 We're not. No. First of all, I'm not gonna let you do this with WrestleMania season on the horizon, sir. It's the Royal season. Rumble is next week. Yeah, WrestleMania. Is Jamal, season. when did you grow up and stop watching wrestling? Stop watching wrestling. When did you become an adult and say, no, I'm not gonna <laughs> do that? Anymore. When I got into other sports, I guess. Really. You got into real sports yeah yeah okay <laughs> but i did go to i went to i remember going to like a wrestlemania like a, i was like 11 12 okay like maybe yeah 12 yeah you're a dick <laughs> <laughs> um people have said that about me were worse oh so. i get it way worse i get it way more than I mean, you I mean, you're there, a nicer guy there than are, me there are, i mean there's a lot of wrestling fans out here oh yeah uh, i know they could be yeah. mad at me that's fine yeah. <laughs> that's a lot fine. of people of color too Okay, yeah, that's really gonna get me on the side of those. Twelve percent of wrestling we connect with that color. color. That, 12? No, I'm just no it's oh, oh, I was gonna say it's more than that. I don't yeah. know how much, but it's yeah. more than that. No, but yeah, but do you, you you feel like we just have to continue uh, 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 pushing this issue? But, oh, yeah. or, or how do we get to that that spot where we have to where they can make that real change? Because I agree with that brother, uh, Mr. Mr. Graves, and what he said. And we, there has to be actual action here, right? Like there has to be. Hey, somebody has to say we want to do this. I don't know which owner that's going to be because it does fall on the well, one of the owners is uh, what Stephen Ross, uh, my um, the Dolphins, the Dolphins, who's had you know he's been on both sides of issues. He's had he has yes. he's had his problems too. But but you know he you know with the hiring of Brian Flores, it was reported that you know he tried to take you know he tried to he tries to go different areas. He tries to understand uh, different people's. Uh, points of view remember he started a foundation with the rise foundation i think it is yeah yeah uh you know to deal you know to to deal with more issues that affect minority and then uh, kenny stills was like yo what, right. what you doing right so he's been right. on both sides but, but at the same time he he support he i think he supports trump at least monetarily in some ways yeah right so yeah. there are issues on both sides but you need either that you need owners uh to start thinking differently or to be forced to think differently or to, to be influenced to think differently. Mm -hmm. Or you need different owners or you need more minority, well, that, minority that's, owners. Well, that's, that's where it starts. And not just of the NFL teams, basically of all sports teams, of companies across America. You just need new people in charge. Right. You just need new people that are making these decisions. You need new ownership across the board. Right. And right now, uh, the people that grew up with money, mostly white people, from back in the day, they're inheriting that now. So right. it's their generation that is in charge and making all these decisions across the board. Right. Not just in the NFL, yeah. but yeah. in just anything in general. I mean, the real issue is is deep. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, like, so it, it, it's it, societal. It, it began before slavery. Right. And it's still, you know what it I mean? It continues and systemic racism right. continues. But that, that's the starting point. But if you tell if you tell certain people that, they'll think you're bugging. But like, no, that that 
that sort of we're seeing it now. No, it's there's still effects of it now, no and it's question. going on all over the place in terms of looking at who's getting said opportunities and such. Right now, the question is, y'all are bugging. You don't want certain people there, to have a seat at the table. Seriously, if there were no slavery, there would no there would be no need to have a BET and a revolt and all these other black owned sort of enterprises. Yeah, but but, you, but we need to, and we need we have to continue to talk about it because, as Jamal said before, we can't expect uh, other people to talk about it, and they're not going to shame themselves. So. Yeah, it's shameful. We're going to shame you. The Sports Walk is back. Watch Season 3 of Backpack Broadcasting's original web series that brings you the opinions of real sports fans. The first two seasons and current season are available now for viewing on the Sports Walk YouTube channel and Facebook page. Check out the 2017 NYC Web Fest official selection and see what other sports fans have to say on the hottest issues in sports today. It's easy. Just take the Sports Walk. Hit some NBA stuff real quick with you, uh, Jamal. Know we always watching the NBA. What's going on? Who's real and who's not? We're going to talk about here because I have some. Th- I feel like the frauds are starting to get it, come out and get exposed a little bit. Yeah, uh, we're about midway through. Uh, the season. We're about mid- yeah, we're about midway through the season. Now's a good time uh, for this. Now's a good time to look at like the t- who you think's real and who's not. Are there any teams of concern for you? Let's start, start in the East. Who uh, who do you think suspect in the East right now? Mm. Suspect in the East yeah. in terms of like in the playoff picture. Already? Yeah, they're in the playoff picture. Yeah. yeah, we're not counting the teams outside the playoff picture. Suspect in terms of you thought they might have been a contender. They don't really look like that. Who's a, who's a team for that for you? Hmm. You know what you want to say. Say Philly. Say Philly. I, I, I go back and I go back and forth. Yeah, I mean, I thought. I mean, I go back and forth on Philly because I yeah I thought I I think I picked them to win the East. Uh, to start, um, and that How, includes the regular season. Are you feeling good about that? Not the regular season. Okay. No, not at all. I, I'm I pretty sure they're go, not. I picked them to go to the finals um, too. But I'm not convinced that they won't. They won't be in the finals. You know, I think. I think they. They uh, when they played the best teams in the East, they've sh- they've shown up at least at home. Milwaukee for sure. Boston. So really, all of, all the East is suspect. You know, to me, I mean, I think I think I've been impressed with with what Milwaukee has done in the regular season, but you've seen. In certain games and matchups, that there are still issues there, um, you know. Everybody says, you know, Middleton is he is he a good enough number two uh, star to have? You know, and you you got to say no until he shows you differently. Agreed. Um, based on you know, based on even last year, so I I still think the East is is kind of wide open, like more than definitely more wide open than I thought it would be. There are better there are there are teams better than I thought they would be. Even even I, I thought Boston would be good. I think they've probably been a little better than I thought they'd be. Miami's definitely better than I thought they'd be. Toronto's better than I thought they'd be. <laughs> um, Indiana's better than I thought they'd be. So that's so that's why I can say I'm not sure about Philly because even though I thought Philly'd be better, I didn't know that the rest of the East would be better and challenge them. You know how I feel about Philly. <laughs> I think they got a lot of problems, particularly because – one person refuses to shoot. <laughs> I can't you blame him. But he, he plays great defender. Great defender, right? But they don't fit. Yo, yo, I think, I think, I think I might be out on them going to the finals. I, I <laughs> never was in. I was, but I, I picked them before. But you Jamal picked Milwaukee. T- Who did I pick to go to the finals? Did you pick Philly or Milwaukee? I think I, had Milwaukee. I picked Philly. No, I, had ah. Lakers, I had Lakers. I had Lakers. Bucks. I had Lakers Bucks. I had Lakers Sixers. Um, I'm I had confident Clippers in that Sixers. Sixers. But I'll, but to to your point, I don't feel super great about the Bucks either. Right. I feel better about them than I do about Philly. You asked me, am I blaming Simmons for their problems? Yes, I partly am, because he messes up everything with the spacing. <laughs> F- fantastic. But, but is that his fault or the or the or the people who? Built the team. Around. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great question because I was having this conversation with my boy. He's still the other great. Day. He's still a very talented player. Oh, I'm not saying that right. he's not talented. I don't like the fact that he doesn't shoot to some degree. And I said this before. Brett Brown came out and said this the other day. It's on the coaching. It's on the coaching staff. Yeah, like three years ago. Three and the management. Right. You got to tell him that he's got to be able to shoot. I think I said this when Howard Beck was up here yeah. that I'd spoken to somebody who yeah, yeah, worked yeah. close in the organization and said that. You know, he can be a little bit of a certain way, and they tried to work with him, and he didn't seem to care to want to 
put in the work as far as the shooting goes. He's got to start shooting in his games. I do fault Brett Brown for that. He's taking, I think he's taking more. He's taking more threes this year than last year. No, nah, not yet. You know what to he me? Have, he he's took threes o- last year. He's zero for six last year. He's he took two, six threes last he's year. He's two for five this year, but two of them are heaves. So he's two for three this year. Really. Oh, okay. Here's yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't even care. I don't even care about him shooting threes as much. Right. Just shoot the ball. Can you shoot like, outside of three feet? They're probably all. They're probably all like with the shot clock winding down too. You yeah, that, what that's mean? what I'm saying. Like. Like he Do they really be, count? He, you know, when they, especially like when they, I would, I've been saying since last year, if I'm the coach, if I, I would, I would make him shoot at least two. Out, like you if said, you don't, you get benched. You're sitting on the bench. You yeah. need to shoot at least two, three outside shots a That's game it. beyond what's you know 16 feet or whatever, yeah. um, or else, or else you're coming out, or else you get fined. Do something. When your there best you player you're, is a center, you have to give him space. You're not like I mean, Magic. Magic didn't shoot threes. Uh, his rookie, you know, his first game, couple though. years. But I'm just saying. When but, he came up, there wasn't even a he, three point line. But he also <laughs> learned how it became a it became a strength. But he started he started taking it because and, he couldn't he couldn't me, just have real, people sag off all the time. All Simmons has to do is look at Giannis, like look, look right. at what yeah. look at what he's doing. He's he's trying to add it to his game and he's becoming a better player for it. He becomes a threat out there. He even has some games where remember against the Lakers, he hit about five of them. But the thing is, you can't. You're hurting the offense. This is why I do put – even though I agree with you that the blame falls on the on the higher-ups and the coach staff for not doing that, if he just starts taking them, at least the defense has to be like, oh, right. man, we got to put a hand up and we got to get out there. Right. If you're not taking them, then everybody's just going to sag off you, especially as we talk about come playoff time, and it's going to hurt the and it's team. And it's a confidence thing. You know, you know, I played basketball in high school and college. Yep. Like, I know – basketball is like, is like 95% confidence. Word. Okay? And yep. It, it could come Word. and go. But – that type of thing where you refuse to shoot, that's strictly confidence. So I almost think yep. it's like the yips. You know what I'm saying? Like for I have another word it, for he it. He does not want to shoot. <laughs> I've seen I've been, I've watched Philly games where you know he's setting screens and stuff, and someone's supposed to pop out. He won't even pop out because yeah. he doesn't want to shoot. I have another word for it that I've said in our group chat that I'm not going to repeat on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can, you know. <laughs> the, um, the, if, but <laughs> the, the, the thing that concerns me real quick, I say, Brian, do yeah. you know what concerns me? What happens? I brought the scenario up to a friend the other day. We get into a playoff game. Sixers are down two or three. They got the ball. No, 20 seconds left. No Jimmy Butler they're to mo- save they're them. They're moving it around. They're trying to get a good shot. They get it to Embiid at the top. He, double comes on him. The right swing for him to make is to pass the ball to Ben Simmons, who's right there at the three-point line, and he catches the ball with three seconds left. He's going to drive in and look for That's Dennis what Richardson. my friend said. <laughs> Charge. That's what <laughs> And Rex Chapman will be all over that. <laughs> that's what that's what my friend said. He said he's not going to take he's that shot. Drive in and pass it to Tobias Harris or Josh. Well, that's Richardson. what I'm saying. Like in the regular season, and, I heard, gonna... uh, and Scotty Pippen said the same thing recently. I mean, the regular season is, is the time to experiment, get you know, get better. You know, how about when you're playing, you know, who, Cleveland? When you have a game against Cleveland, just take like start taking outside. You're going to win anyway. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? No, it's You're going to win by 15 it's to 20 true. anyway. Especially if Colin Sexton is guarding you. We don't care. Good. You go six for 20. I, we don't care. Nobody's going to know. Who cares? Nobody's going to know. <laughs> we're, not even, we're not even watching those highlights. It's Word. Cleveland. That game is not even going to be available on League Pass. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, here's the thing that's yes, scary. Yes, go too. ahead. Uh, because people were talking about how historic they could potentially be defensively and things like that. They're fifth in the Eastern Conference right now. Fantastic defensive So team. L- let's play this game. If the playoffs were today, right? Because the standings could pretty much, like, be roughly the same by the time we get to the end of the season. Uh, Detroit's not even in the playoffs. They're fifteen. They're fourteen and twenty-five. Terrible. Uh, your New York Knicks are inquiring about Andre Drummond. I don't know why. Don't know why. Uh, that is very. Int- <laughs> you're you're hanging on, bro. You couldn't see my face when you text me about that yesterday, <laughs> but man, <laughs> Mike, I think Mike Miller's coming back down to earth. Yo, I don't know. here's the thing too. Here's the thing too. It didn't make sense to me when I heard about it, and then you reminded me. Oh yeah, Mitchell Robinson is on the team already. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, that's. I, I right. can't even get my tra- energy. Can't even trade Mitchell Robinson for no, no. That's probably worth it. Oh, Jamal, right, anyway. so so and, and, um. And Barrett, no, I'm just playing. Oh, by the way, how do you feel about Trey Young doing what he's doing on an A win team? I don't mind it. I, I've I've heard the backlash. He's still an um, all star. They don't have. They, first of all, they don't have anything around him. I know, but okay. they're sort of, but they're sort of setting him up to be like, yo, just just do whatever you want. I mean, he's this doing he's <laughs> doing what Luka Doncic is doing, but it, but it, but Doncic has a good team. He's got better role players. You know, I bet, I bet you their usage is about the same. I just asked because I know that's your boy. <laughs> it is though. Um, oh, Trey Young might have the highest usage rate in the league, probably. But but probably rightfully so. Who is he going to pass to? Alan Crabb. I don't even think he's healthy. Nope. Yeah. DeAndre Bembry is like the second best player. No, Jabari Parker is like the second best player. Yes. After no, John Collins is back now. But it was. But I always bad. did worry. Go, just to touch on that, I always did worry about how 
he got along. Remember last year I brought that up? Like he had hit a game-winning shot. Oh. It was the first time ever <laughs> I had seen somebody hit a game-winning shot, and no, nobody on his team came to congratulate him. <laughs> it was the craziest thing. I was, like, <laughs> I was watching it. I, I, re- yeah, yeah, I, I like rewound you told it. Us I was that. like, wait. You're he just like, hit a game with shot and no one came over there? Yeah, like, yeah. It was the wildest thing. So then you hear now that, you know, the, the, I can the see trouble that, though. in the locker room. Yeah, I can see he, that. He, he needs to be, uh, he needs to become a little more mature. This, like, to me, as a point guard, I, I think, mm-hmm. and it's like quarterback, too, in football. Yeah. When you talk about Russell Wilson, we were talking about him uh, before the show started. We were talking about Russell, Russell Wilson being, you know, he's a little corny or whatever. <laughs> that, that's fine, but you need that as a, as a point guard or a quarterback or a leader. You need to say... You know, sometimes, you know, you throw a great pass and the dude drops it. You need yeah. to be like, oh, my, my fault. That yeah. Was a bad pass. And then say go Hawks like, at the end of every yeah, sentence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or you throw a pass, perfect pass, the dude drops it. No, 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 my bad. Yeah, my yeah. bad. Yeah. That's what leaders do. Yeah. So I think, you know, Trey, or just pass the ball sometimes for no reason. Like, I just took two shots in a row. Oh, I'm going to let this, I'm gonna let this guy cook for that. Everybody else involved. But that's right. where I think guys like Steve Nash are underrated historically right, because he was great at that. Right. And that's this huge. Is because his, all of his teammates love him for right, that. Right. And that's why the Suns were as good as they were for that long period of time. Can, like the, the great leaders do that. Pick people you up, gotta do, better. You got to yeah. do that. Yeah. Like we hear stories of other point guards like getting into confrontations mm-hmm. with teammates and then there are like others mm-hmm. that don't. So that's kind of interesting. Um. Anyway, top eight. Bucks and Nets would be a first round series. I don't care if Kevin Durant's coming back. The Bucks are winning that series. Of course. Kevin Durant's not coming back. He's not coming back. He better not come back. That yeah. was stupid. He might. He's not coming back. All right. It'd be a repeat. I know y'all tore y'all Achilles before, but look. I no, mean, I, no, but I will say that <laughs> that he um they've they've been reports that he's recovering like extraordinarily fast. I I believe it because at at pre with at media day yeah. he's walking around doing tolis. I was like, wow. I was yeah. like, that, this is early. To be I, doing that's why I think tolis. he might play in April. Yeah. I, look, I, I'm skeptical. Mm-hmm. I don't trust people, so I think I think they, they could say what they want about <laughs> oh he's gonna he's gonna sit out the whole season. Like oh, okay, okay. I we'll ruptured mine. I think probably ten years ago. I still can't do a toe raise. No, I'm just joking. Oh, nah. I, gonna, I, I was like, I was like, yo, still, yo, I was like, yo, like, you okay? I'm still like hesitant. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I I get it. Yeah. So uh, Bucks Nets. Um, Heat magic, the battle for Florida. Oh, it's not. Kind it's of not really a battle. Heat. We're gonna we're gonna get to the heat in a second. Oh God. Uh, we're gonna get to the heat in a second. Celtics Pacers. That'd be a, a good series, but I'll take the Celtics. And Victor Oladipo is gonna be healthy. That's true. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's mm-hmm. a little I'll take the Celtics. And so play. Sixers playing, and then Raptors Sixers. That could be fun. Raptors at, would be home right now. Mm-hmm. Midway through the season, roughly. If, if the Sixers are healthy, I still still think they'd win that series. Sure. I mean, um, sure, we'll see. But yeah. listen, that but that's what I'm saying. It's like, all right, we'll go let's assume let's assume the Sixers win, right? Even though they might not. They'd get the Bucks in round two. That's what they don't want. Now. But the thing is that but see the thing about that, I'm gonna say this now, halfway through the season. The one thing about the Sixers, there's certain teams I don't like to match up against them. Miami concerns me against them, but there's certain teams they're built to beat. Boston's got problems with them because of their size. Boston right now cannot beat them. I don't think so. And Milwaukee, they can give problems because of their size. I saw it on Christmas. I think that's why a lot of people like you guys picked them. I understand why they picked them to get out the yeah. East. My concern, the team, the two teams that concern me, I said Miami, the other one if they match up with is Indiana. Those two teams, because of the way they can play with their bigs and space it out, they concern me. And they have I, good guard play that can put some pressure on Simmons. They concern me, and they're good defensively enough that – it was Simmons not spacing the floor. It'll hurt them. But but Philly is really, really beat to build Milwaukee with this size. They can throw it. I was going to say that. And I think they can also shut down and make life hard for Middleton. And we can see Bledsoe disappear again. And then it's like you look Yo. at Milwaukee and you're like, eh, I don't really know. Here's the thing. Everybody healthy, I think the Sixers will take out the Bucks. And then I don't think that's crazy. I could see that it's, I, I it's not a good matchup for the Bucks. No, I, it's the but it's the matchup. I think because, that's the toughest for I mean, the Bucks. Because have to go crazy. That's the thing. If Giannis is not averaging 40, 16, and seven, <laughs> I don't know if they're going to win. But the thing is, I could see a, I could see a series where Giannis puts them numbers up, and they still and move. the Sixers are like, I right. yeah. <laughs> but what you but what you going to do, uh, Chris Middleton? Chris Middleton. What are you going to do, Bledsoe? Dante Divincenzo. And I think I, I, don't hey, sleep on Dante, man. Pat Connaughton. Nah, don't. Because he's a play, he can play. You can sleep on Connaughton, but <laughs> <laughs> nah. But Dante can ball. There's a universe where that could happen. I can still see the Sixers winning, yeah. and people are gonna sit back and look at Giannis. Is gonna be like, Yo, what do y'all have around me? I went and did all this crazy stuff. It may look like LeBron at, at the end of 2010. Here's the thing. He might be like, Peace. And it comes to the Knicks. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> will, will it will it matter? Because after this, uh, 
Heat Celtics, I I think the Heat win that series. I think they're a good matchup for the Celtics. A That's bad a, matchup. I think Celtics. that would be a fantastic series that would go seven. I would lean to the Heat right now, but that we're getting so ahead of ourselves. Heat Sixers. I would lean. I would lean. The Heat scared me. <laughs> the Heat. The <laughs> Heat is like, not. Yo, a, it's not a good yo, matchup for the Sixers. Yo, I'm saying they can get to the finals. Like, no, there's, yeah. there's, could. there's they, a path. I don't think to, they have enough, though. There's a, have path, enough. there's a path to getting to the finals if they stay healthy. They probably need some help. The yeah. thing I think you're, We have a Heat fan in here right now. Yeah, the thing and I think. It ain't me. <laughs> I mean, you, you're, you're close to it. You're Timmy, close you to you want to talk fan. about your team? You're close to the Heat. Yeah, come, come on. Talk about the Heat. We won't, we won't get anybody else that's going to be that excited about them. How you doing, man? Timmy Thank Bain. You, uh, I'll go. Uh, front of, straight off uh, the Bahamas. Sure, came here. Jet. Came here to okay, New York you to got visit. you got the colors on yeah, and everything. Yeah. I, I see I that. I saw on your yeah, um, from Grenada. Grenada, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, jab jab, jab 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 crew, man. Here, yeah. good to yeah. good to have another crew, brother. Now, you like this the heat? My guy. He's a you heat like fan. you like the heat? Heat fans since 2002. How insufferable is this guy about the heat? <laughs> we DM about the heat all the time. About the heat. We talk every about him. Are you, how do you speak to this guy every day? Every day about the He's heat. the fan of the team. I'm like, yo, we and, you, and he sends me more than I send him. I, I believe that. I believe that. I'm the heat fan, and he's like, wait, look what Bomb just did. <laughs> yo, are you welcoming him into the Heat yes, he is, fandom? Yes, he is. He's he, See, I, tough, I, I'm I, straight. He has my blessing. Tough loss I'm last night. Though. Yeah, I was really tough upset. Tough loss last night. I, I did it myself. I flew yeah. to New York. And did you get to the game? No, I, oh, okay. I just reached last night. So okay. I came, I think my presence uh-huh. threw the heat off. That's why. So I <laughs> Shouldn't your presence help the heat? No, I have, uh, I've had some bad luck. You had some so. bad vibes? Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm, 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 are you I'm going watching. to are you going to when they play the Knicks tomorrow? No, um, because I'm not here with my, my soul goddess. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But my wedding anniversary is next weekend, and my wife are watching. Um, he play um the, the Kings. You know, Buddy. I was but, at Buddy's. Buddy Hill. Well, that's why I, know, I, I covered Buddy at this draft, and I covered Aiden at this draft. Ah, so, that's how we met. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so that's how you met him. Go, yeah. go. It's okay. Yeah, so um, yeah. I'm me and my wife are watching, but Buddy play the Heat next. Um, MLK Day. MLK Day. MLK Day. They yeah. play the oh, Heat. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. okay. So that's nice. So. You just heard Brian say something that I don't know if Jamal thinks is crazy, but in my head I was like, yeah, he, there might, is he might be path. bugging. You think they can go to the finals? I, there's a path. I, don't know, I think we may run out of gas because we, we've, the last two or three weeks, we've been playing eight players and it's been cutting our hip. Yo, um, yeah. Winslow came back, but then he's back out again with that back. Yep. And like, I'm, I, I've been a Winslow fan. I met Winslow at Buddy's draft, mm-hmm. um, but he can't stay healthy. He's never, every January he's been in the league, he's never started the year healthy. Mm-hmm. He's been in the league, I think, four years now. Justice was this is fourth season. Fifth. That's yeah. fifth. he's yeah. never January first has never met him healthy, huh? Ever. So you just you just you just don't you don't. He's I don't think they can go to the finals. No, yeah, I think, it's, it's I a think if, a if, if we if we if it breaks right, everything has to break right. But I think we break we run out of gas mm-hmm. unless right. Riley does what Riley does and right. sees he sees the opening and he he trades Kelly and Dion and James for like yeah. Aldridge or something. I like I that. proposed I proposed yeah I sent them a trade yesterday. I said what? trade trade Kelly Olynyk KZ Okpala and maybe you throw in your second round pick and get Bobby Porter's. Yeah, he, he said yes. Okay. Did. But I don't think Porter's would put him over the top. No, no, no. but, but uh, Kelly uh, Olynyk's uh, not giving you anything. Yeah, Kelly, right, Kelly was right. a god said last like, season. You, but what you need for Bobby Porter's is you just need 15 minutes of just points, boards, toughness. That's and right what's been killing us the last two weeks is when Kelly's on the floor, he's he's literally average man, two, two points per possession. The <laughs> opponent's getting gets given up two two wow. points of possession. So you need him on the floor. Every time yeah. he gets, every time some, his man gets the ball, they score. Him. Jamal, do you believe in the Heat? Uh, no, not to not to make the finals. I don't believe I don't believe in that. But I think I I can see conference final. I think that's yeah. their ceiling. Conference final. Like Drag Drag has been the guard somebody again. Drag is still playing with a deep brace. So like it takes one bad fall for Drag to be right. He just missed nine games with the groin. Um, Jimmy is solid. Uh, I really love Hero. Um, I, I was I was like I don't he, know. If he loves. He loves. I, I didn't Hero. know we needed. We, I like because I, I thought we was like none. None came from from nowhere. I, I know. Didn't both, expect it. I know the Warriors were, were upset. They didn't keep him because this was the season. None could have flourished. Right. Um. So none. Hero. Duncan Robinson. Yeah. Man, so he's my, shooting the lights my, out, my best friend is a is a Michigan fan, so he's been telling me about saying, yeah, but he won't be that good in the league. I didn't he's think been he was going to play at all. He's been good because he dude played last year too. D three. Yes. Okay. So yes. He, he was not supposed to be so in the league. Supposed yes. to be in the league. If Duncan Robinson were black, would he get that opportunity with Michigan? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> to go back to our earlier discussion. I had, a, I, had a, I had a beeline joke, but I'm going to leave it alone. Oh, <laughs> he's playing like a slug? Like a slug. <laughs> like a slug. Even though, we I don't know, even need to get even into though that. I'm That's not sure about that. I'm not. Yeah, like, I'm not a hardliner. Okay? I'm like, wow. I, I met. Beal, I've talked to Beeline multiple times. I never got that. Not that it matters. Yeah. You, know, you don't right. really know. You don't really know people. But, uh, but his you know, the rationale doesn't make any sense. 
How, I mean, well, how, Sexton said that, that he, used, he uses slugs all the time, supposedly. Who says that? <laughs> I don't even know why he said anything. He's like, like a slugs. 70-year-old dude. You know what? See, that, that was my reaction to that. When, when I saw that, I was like, oh. It's an old white man being an old white man. Yeah. That's like kind of was my the reaction. The fact that his assistants had to tell him, hey, you, you know you said thugs. <laughs> yeah, he probably didn't even realize like, it. You know what I mean? You, like, said, you said thugs. Thugs. He's like, he's like oh, like, oh they're okay. Playing, they're playing like thugs? Jamal, before we get out of here, because we have one more segment to do after this, what do you, uh, in the West, contenders, pretenders, I'll let you, you can get into mm. my man. Contenders, pretenders, what, what, what do you think about the Western Conference right now? Mm. Who'd you have coming out the West? I had the Clippers. Clippers. Still oh, Clippers. With, I'm still happy with the Clippers, my mm. Clippers pick. Um, pretenders. I'm a little lower on I the think Clippers da- now. Dallas is a pretender. I mean, I yeah, think, I don't think they. We, they, we said before. Mm-hmm. I think we thought we thought they dropped back down from fourth. Yeah, we didn't think yeah. they'd stay up there. I think but, they're still in the playoffs. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I think but, I mean, just, like a contender. But they're at six now, and I think mm-hmm. that's right. I think they'll be five six. I, I, I still have Houston as a contender. I still I, I kind of mm-hmm. think like I'm not sleeping on Houston just based off history. Oh, I'm not. They, they the last two years they've been. I'm in hibernation on the Rockets. That's it for this episode of. A Hotel Podcast, episode 106. We want to thank our friend Jamal Murphy. Thanks Catch out his me. work. Uh, writing for the Undefeated. Also, on the Bros Pod, they had a great episode this week also talking about the issue in the NFL. So if you want right. more discussion on that, I please highly recommend uh, you listen to that because they also had, I'm forgetting my man's name, who, Ken, who Ken runs Tropshire. Ken Tropshire, who uh, runs the, the and research. Kavitha, Kavitha Davidson. And Kavitha Davidson was also on. A great writer as well, too, um, that, that was on as well. So it was definitely good. Um Brian, we thank you for being here. We thank you, my Bahamian. To me. Uh, to me. Appreciate that, my man. For That's coming literally on. his Twitter name. Yeah, That's fine. You, follow, you follow me, right? Yeah, in a, yeah, lot, yeah, of, yeah, in a yeah. lot of letters and all caps. Yeah, in all caps. You follow yeah, me. Man. No, no, no. I, 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 know you, I know you follow me, so do that. Look, man, anytime we can have more West Indian folks up here, yeah. Caribbean folks up here, I'm happy. <laughs> My, my, sister, my mom threw Grenada too. That's, that's, uh, I forgot about uh, that. That's, that's right. Dope. Trinidad Tobago but grew up in Grenada. My, my sister oh, yeah. Nicole who came here to watch the show, to watch the, 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 the recording and taping. Uh, Trinidadian represent, represent. So we have a lot of uh, island people. Island people. And I'm actually here for the weekend. Um, my artist recording some new soca tracks. So. Oh really? Yeah, okay. Yeah, he got an artist. That's oh, got, why he's in here. I gotta yeah, check yeah, it out. Yeah, pr- promote that. What's that? Yeah. Um. So her name is Jamie. Um. So we're writing Union City recording some music. Um. So we're going to. Um, true, I got involved in four weeks. In four weeks, then yeah. Then Bahamas Carnival is May, oh, it's my birthday, May 2nd, then we're going to New Orleans Caribbean Festival in uh, June. And I, might we, have to, I might try to come down there in June with you, man. Hey. hey. Also, I haven't <laughs> been to Trinidad Carnival, so you're going to be getting- This is my first. This, this is your first, first time? Yeah. I haven't been. You'll be getting all real, real hey, bad? Oh, hey, hey, I'm known as the king of soca in the Bahamas. So. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, I didn't realize who I was talking to. Oh, <laughs> nah, man. Nah, nah, as a so, As a yeah. soca lover, I did yeah. not realize who I was talking to. <laughs> not for real. Oh, he's king of soca. And we cannot we cannot forget our Puerto Rican brother. Brother here, Brian, as, right. as well too. Island too. You I, I, know. Island, Island brethren is, as as well too. Always show love. Uh, so for my man Timmy, thank you for joining. You Jamal, we thank you here. as always. Brian, this is episode one hundred and six of Any Hotel Podcast. You know how to support us. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, continue to support us. We'll have some extra content uh, coming out soon on Patreon for episode one hundred and six of the Any Hotel Podcast. I'm Dexter Henry. Until next time, y'all. Peace.